Welcome back to the course corrosion failures and analysis and we have lecture 11 now and the topic covered will be galvanic corrosion. We have talked about uh, galvanic series as well as mechanism of galvanic corrosion. Now, gradually we will get into different factors associated with the galvanic corrosion. So, the course is corrosion failures and analysis and lecture 11 and the topic galvanic corrosion. Now, we talked about galvanic series and if I go back to that galvanic series again. Uh, if you see this, this galvanic series X basically it is a mention of all the uh, metals and alloys and the metals which is sitting above will act as anode cathode and metal which is sitting below will act as anode. And interestingly this galvanic series what is mentioned in that book it is basically in sea water, it is in sea water. Okay. So, now if you change that uh, uh, electrolyte it might change again. So, now in that galvanic series uh, we talked about cathodic protection in that cathodic protection one is sacrificial one is uh, one is the cathode which is being protected. For example, we talk about steel and zinc coating. Now, if we have zinc coating, now steel another situation tin coating let us say, tin coating fine. So, these are the two situations let us consider and let us look at their positions and if I see the positions. Uh, you just go back in the previous lecture you can see that in the galvanic series what has been taken from the book by written by Fontana and Green. So, there it is in the sea water tin is on top of steel and in between there are quite uh, quite a good number of metals and alloys. For example, we have lead, lead tin solder in between tin and steel, then uh, active 18 H stainless steel, then we have cast iron. In fact, cast iron is, is basically in the bracketed form. So, that means, cast iron and steel can be considered as a grouped one. So, where if you have a cast iron and steel combination, so galvanic effect will be minimized. Now, again if we see zinc presence in between we have good number of aluminum, cadmium, commercial pure aluminum and then we are having zinc. And in fact, below that zinc we have put magnesium. Okay. So, now here the combination is we have a steel plate and then we are putting a tin coating. So, this is the tin coating let us say. In another case in this case this is steel in this case steel and on top of that we have zinc coating. Okay. Now, when they are intact. So, that means, no steel is exposed, no part of the steel is exposed. So, the condition one is no part of the steel is exposed. Okay. Now, if no part of steel is exposed, 
then zinc will corrode on its own nature in seawater and tin will corrode on its own as its own electrochemical character in seawater. In fact, in normal atmosphere also tin stays on top of steel and zinc stays below say steel. So, now that time the corrosion will be guided by zinc corrosion or tin corrosion. Okay. So, that is the situation, but now question is if zinc corrosion and tin corrosion is taking place until unless the steel is exposed, how come the effect of galvanic corrosion comes in. The question is whenever it is coated and it is transported or when it is loaded and unloaded, loaded at factory end and then unloaded at the customer end, there will be always some mechanical erosion or mechanical wear and that mechanical wear or damage of the surface. Even let us say there is no damage, but still when you fix that steel sheet coated with zinc, when you fix it on the roof, we have to also puncture it and then fix nuts and bolts to fasten it with the with the structure we are making beneath the roof. So, that time we are actually making perforation and what happens because of that some part of it some part of this is steel and this is zinc, this is zinc some part of, of steel is exposed to environment. To environment. Similar thing can happen here. Steel is exposed. Okay. Now, because of this exposure to the electrolyte, there could be moisture. Let us say there is some moisture present because it is environment, lot of moistures are present. So, we have moisture and of course, in the environment we have oxygen. Let us not take other substance acid forming substance like SO2 or SO3, which will lead to H2SO4 or let us say carbon dioxide, which can form carbonic acid. Okay. So, let us not take those cases, let us say those are not there, only moisture and oxygen. And if the environment is neutral, then the cathodic reaction that would happen is this cathodic reaction would happen. Similarly, now this cathodic reaction would happen, where it would happen now we have to judge. Now, as per galvanic series I could see that the steel is staying on top of zinc. So, here the cathodic reaction happen on iron or steel surface. Okay. Now, before this section was exposed, when no part was exposed, the cathodic reaction was the same cathodic reaction was there. Same cathodic reaction was there and anodic reaction was zinc minus 2 E equal to zinc plus plus, but those were happening over the entire segment 
and zinc was having uniform corrosion. Similarly, here on top of tin this cathodic reaction is this is cathodic, this is anodic and here also cathodic reaction would be O 2 plus 2 H 2 O plus 4 E equal to 4 O H minus and anodic reaction would be S n minus 2 E equal to S n plus 2. So, dissolution of tin and dissolution of zincs are taking place over the entire surface in uniform corrosion. But once this steel part is exposed, this reaction would happen on steel surface in case of zinc steel situation. So, that means, in this case not in this case, in this case this would be the situation, because as per the galvanic series steel is cathode and zinc is anode. Okay. So, and cathodic reaction happens on cathode and cathode will be protected, though corrosion will be there, but that corrosion of steel will be very, very small. So, there will be little corrosion of course, so you can have little bit of corrosion, okay, iron corrosion, but these segments, these segments, so zinc section, they will supply electron, this electron by this reaction. Okay. So, this would happen on zinc surface right? and that way we will have electron supply and zinc is dissolving, dissolve or corrode and steel sections will be protected, protected. So, the corrosion would be around that zinc part and but this one would be this segment will be protected. An interesting part is if this opening is quite large, let us say the opening is quite large instead of this the opening is this a quite a large segment of that steel surface. is actually exposed to the environment. In that case, you might experience that the corrosion in this particular steel segment will be more around center part away from this joining part. So, this segment will have more corrosion and this segment will be protected, but this segment will be less protected, less protected. Now, at least let us understand first this part, this part is understood that because it is acting as cathode. So, that is what it is having less corrosion and zinc is sacrificing itself. This particular example I will talk about in little while, first let us see the second part. The second part which talks about tin steel situation. Okay. So, that time if you see this galvanic series in case of tin and steel, tin will act as cathode now and this is tin and steel will act as anode. Okay. So, cathodic reaction here the cathodic reaction would be this, this should happen on tin surface and that time that electron would be supplied by this one which is steel surface, steel surface. So, in the second situation in fact steel is corroding, this is the steel corrosion part and the tin is protected, though there will be little corrosion of tin, 
because we cannot stop corrosion of the tin the way we have explained our mixed potential theory in case of zinc and iron. You just go back and just have a look at it. Tin will corrode, but it will be less. But that corrosion also will be uh, uh, very small okay, for the case of tin, but still would corrode. Now, the interesting part is in this case another effect would come in. It is very clear that now iron is acting as a sacrificial. This is acting as a sacrificial anode and this is nothing but same as zinc in case of zinc iron. Okay. So, this is corrosion, but the interesting part is in this second case in this case iron corrosion would be extremely large, very large corrosion would happen. Why? The question is why the very, very extremely corrosion of steel. The reason lies on another factor. Now, this cathodic reaction, this cathodic reaction happens on the entire surface and in this case the cathodic reaction happens on the small segment. Fine. Now, since for example, in this case if it 100 numbers of these reactions happens, in this case since the area of the cathode is very large. So, this number could be 1000. So, now if it is 1000 number, then where from that electron, even if it is 100, where from that electrons will come? Electrons will be provided by the cathode anode section. In this case, in case of steel, zinc, zinc area is so large, so that much of electron will be supplied uniformly, let us say it is happening uniformly, very little zinc will dissolve in order to protect steel. But since here we have a huge amount of cathodic reactions that, that are taking place on the tin surface, so that much of electron will be supplied with this narrow area, this narrow area will supply that electron. And you know whenever it supplies that electron, large number of iron ions must form in order to supply this electron to this cathodic reaction. So, that requirement leads to a extremely high corrosion in this situation in this situation okay very very high corrosion high rate of corrosion we will analyze it on the basis of mixed potential theory but that will do in the next lecture because we don't have much time left for this particular segment but at least let us analyze this part that just by changing the galvanic series metals, the choice of metals, we could see in one case it is actually sacrificially protected and in another case the, another, the same metal, same steel is actually behaving like a sacrificial anode. So, in case of tin steel couple, steel is sacrificial anode and in case of zinc steel couple, zinc is sacrificial anode and there steel is protected, but in this case steel is corroding very high. At the same time, this extreme large corrosion of iron exposed steel part is coming due to large area of cathode. Okay. So, this large area of cathode and if we compare the area ratio, large area of cathode and small anode. And the requirement requirement of electrons for the cathodic reaction on large area cathode will be met by large amount of 
ion formation from small area anode and that leads to high corrosion rate of anode. Now, it is not only galvanic couple, the wrong galvanic couple. So, this is a wrong galvanic couple that still what is the actual structural material we should not use some coating which is cathodic to that particular state, but it also associated with the large area and small area, large area cathode and small area anode. In the first case, since see whenever we are using zinc coating, we should not have such situation that, that the coating dissolves so quickly that we have to uh, the protection provided by that zinc coating is there only for few years. We want this particular steel to be protected for at least 10 years. Okay. So, that time that self corrosion of zinc should also be minimized and that minimization is not coming just due to zinc corrosion, it is also coming because the anode area is very large and to protect that small cathode area little electrons are required and that little electrons can be supplied by that zinc area and that little electron that zinc corrosion will be distributed over the surface. So, the net corrosion or of zinc would be less just to give the same degree of protection and that is what the zinc coating will stay for a longer duration. But if we see this particular situation, it is reverse happening first of all because the polarity is different, tin is cathode and small area steel is anode, but that area factor is also leading to extreme high corrosion of that particular small area anode. Now, the thumb rule is while whatever design you have the thumb rule is first thumb rule is we should choose choice of metals or alloys from they should stay close in galvanic series and the second thumb rule is area of cathode should be less than area of anode. So, then only we have good protection otherwise it will just damage that. Now, just let us explain this part. Now, whenever whenever we have the if we have for example, in this case it is zinc, it is zinc and this is steel substance section, you should have a small area opening. This is steel and this is zinc and this is zinc. Instead of small area opening, if it is the opening area is very large, then here also the steel will act as cathode, act as cathode and zinc will act as anode. But that electron flow, if we see the electron flow, so here we have this reaction this reaction and that electron this four electron will come from here to there okay, and by this reaction. Similarly, here of the same situation would happen, this reaction is happening here and this reaction would happen here. Now, electron or the current, so this electron flow or the rate of electron flow we convert into current and here the current is actually flowing through that conductor and here the conductor is nothing but the metal conductor which is zinc and iron and this current value the current always chooses path of less resistance. Now, if this the here also we are having this reaction, this reaction here also the center part is also taking place, but for this electron has to move from this to this. So, quite a large path 
Now, that electron would face resistance, even if it is highly conducting, still it will face e resistance by the conductor. So, the electron flow would be easier if it is close by, these reactions are happening close by rather than they are happening at a wide apart positions. So, zinc corrosion or zinc dissolution in the form of ions, the electrons that is generated may not go there, but still this reaction is happening because it is exposed to the environment. Now, who would supply that electron? In fact, around that zone, the reaction that would happen is So, this reaction would happen and this reaction would happen around this zone, around this segments, section and then this electron would be supplied there. So, if we have written, if we did write this plus 2, this electron would go there and it will meet the requirement of electrons for that cathodic reaction. So, in that case, what situation we are coming up that electrons would like to flow to a section where the resistance is less. Similarly, if we consider a resistance is less. So, that means, if that galvanic couple is close by, the close by portion electron supply would be very easy, but wide apart the electron supply would be minimized and then corrosion protection because of the sacrificial effect will be felt more around this path, around this segment, around this segment, here also it will be felt around this segment, but in this segment it will be its iron, its own corrosion which is meeting the requirement of electron for the oxygen reduction. Okay. So, that means, if it is the good amount of area of steel is exposed because of some mechanical damage, then the galvanic effect would be felt minimum. Okay. Galvanic corrosion protection effect will be minimized and then center part would be highly corroded. But what, what it, one important thing we are getting that if the galvanic couple is formed around that couple, we have the galvanic effect. The feeling of the, the galvanic effect will be felt more in that particular region where the couple is joined together, away from that joint the galvanic effect will be minimized, will be less as you go away from that. So, this is another important aspect we are learning from this example that galvanic effect will be felt where joining of two metals or alloys is done. Fine. Away from that joining galvanic effect will gradually it will reduce the way we have given this example. Okay. So, we will see that two effects one is of course, area factor we have to see that area of cathode should be minimum less than the area of anode. So, then corrosion effect of that anode would be less and second part is we have to also see that close to that galvanic point, galvanic joining point we feel the corrosion effect more and that basic extent. Now, you can understand why all the time whenever I have I show that corrosion effect in the galvanic mode, I have shown that the corrosion gradually reduces as you go away from the galvanic couple. That is the reason that the corrosion will be felt more in that galvanic joint portion, because this is the joining, this is the joining around that joining portion galvanic effect will be felt, but away from that it will be minimized. So, let us stop here, we will continue our discussion in our subsequent lectures. Thank you.